So in the last video we looked at theoretical framework and we defined a theoretical framework and also gave an example of a theoretical framework. And uh, in today's video, we are going to look at a conceptual framework, which is derived from a theoretical framework. My name is Nelson. Welcome to the Ryan Synth Advisory channel. Hit the notification bell and subscribe to get more videos like this. So, what is a conceptual framework? A conceptual framework is a visualization of a theoretical framework. And this derives from the keywords that are in the term conceptual framework. Again, let's look at these key terms. Let's look at a concept. What is a concept? A concept is a visualization of an idea in your mind. Okay? When you give it dimension, when you give it direction, it moves from an idea to a concept, from a notion to a concept, from a thought to a concept. So when you go a step further and put it on a paper or a diagram and give it a physical dimension, then you have developed a conceptual framework okay, that has direction. And usually a typical example would be a blueprint for a house. Okay, you may have your dream house in your mind, but when the architect puts it on paper and it becomes a blueprint, then it becomes a concept. Okay, and that is the very basic definition of a conceptual framework. So, a research conceptual framework borrows the same ideas. What is a research conceptual framework? It is basically a schematic or a diagrammatic representation of the relationship between a dependent variable and an independent variable, okay? So those are the main components of a research conceptual framework. What are the other components of a research conceptual framework? We have what we call moderating variables, okay? But before I talk about the moderating variables, let me just explain what a dependent variable and an independent variable is. A dependent variable is a variable that changes because another variable has changed, okay? It changes according to the situation. An example is performance. So performance changes, for instance, when the salary of, a, of an employee is changed. Performance changes when uh, training is introduced. Performance changes when the work environment is changed. So that makes performance dependent on salary, work environment, training, and a number of other factors. So performance is a dependent variable. Training, on the other hand, does not necessarily change when the performance changes, okay? So training is independent of performance, and therefore training is an independent variable, okay? So that relationship is usually represented in a diagram, and the arrow, usually shows the direction of the relationship. There are, of course, certain relationships that are what we call bidirectional. For instance, salary and performance. While salary increases performance, there are scenarios where performance also increases salary. For instance, performance-based contracts. When you perform well, your salary is increased, okay? So you'll find that while salary is, in, is improving performance, performance is also affecting salary, okay? So that, that, that depiction is usually very clear in a conceptual framework. So what are the other components of a conceptual framework? We have the moderating variable. A moderating variable is a variable that affects the relationship uh, between the dependent variable and the independent variable. It can make it either stronger or weaker. When we look at the example of salary, we can see that age may be a moderating variable for the relationship between salary and performance. An 18-year-old who is given one million will have a different performance level as compared to a 30 or 40 year old who receives the same amount. Why? Because age is associated with certain other responsibilities. An 18 year old may not have rent and other family responsibilities that a 40 year old may have. Okay, so age in that sense is a moderating variable. 
Other variables that may be found in a conceptual framework are variables such as intervening variables or mediating variables. These variables are necessary okay, for that relationship between the independent and the dependent variable to occur. An example would be uh, when we look at um, the Hasberg's theory that talks about um, responsibility being a, um, a motivating factor that increases performance. If you give an employee a responsibility of supervising certain people, for that employee's performance to actually increase, you have to introduce training. You have to train that employee in management, in leadership. For their performance to improve. If you don't, their performance may not necessarily improve. So that means training is actually an intervening variable for the relationship between responsibility and a performance or difficulty of the job and performance. Uh, training would also be an intervening variable for that relationship. Okay. So then there is another variable also usually found in a conceptual framework. And that is the extraneous variable. This is a variable usually that is hard to measure and oftentimes not catered for. And this variable affects the relationship as well of the independent variable and the dependent variable. An example of an extraneous variable would be policies. Okay, There are certain policies that are put in place and these policies do affect the relationship of the dependent variable and the independent variable but cannot be easily measured. Some of them could be human resource policies, some of them could be the existing government laws, labor laws and what have you. So they do affect the performance but are very difficult to measure. Okay, So in a nutshell that is what a conceptual framework is. So what is the purpose of a conceptual framework? So a conceptual framework really helps us to fine-tune our research objectives. A conceptual framework also helps us to structure our literature review in a logical uh, fashion. A conceptual framework also helps us to be able to come up with a robust methodology. A conceptual framework also helps us to come up with a good data analysis plan. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you next time.